friends, welcome back to the Elevate with Erica show. I'm excited for this episode topic today, so let's just jump right in. If you're on my newsletter list, then you already kind of got a preview of this topic in an email a couple weeks back, which by the way, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter club, the link is right in the show notes. It's a weekly email from me sprinkled in with all things that I love, a little motivation, some can't miss sales from various online shops. Tips on everything from date night ideas to kids crafts, and then it's always wrapped up with a good recipe to try for the coming week. So it's me in a newsletter form, basically, a little bit of everything. Go drop your name and your email at the link in the show notes, and that's it. You're in the club. So most of you know, one of the things that I do is I partner with a health and wellness company to lead others to live happier, healthier lives using our programs. And I also lead a team of women who do the same. By the way, this episode is not about working out, okay? So don't leave me. Hang tight for a sec. In the fitness industry, though, you hear a lot of excuses, like not just a lot, but all of them. I said many of them myself before starting on our platform in 2016, and so I'm very familiar, and I know they're easy to grab. Ask someone to work out with you. The first answer is not usually yes. Right. There's usually some kind of hesitancy or excuse that they have ready to pull out at any given moment. Right. So we are um, beginning the launch of a new program on our platform. It's three weeks, 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Our job is to get people to do this with us, inspire people to take care of themselves, which also means that we have to prepare ourselves to help them overcome their excuses. That's part of our job. And the easiest excuse for someone to say, it's just not the right time. And that excuse can be used for literally anything, right? Like not just working out, but anything that would require some sort of change in your life, it's just not the right time. Like my kids are starting sports. My husband's going away a week for work. I'm taking care of my grandmother. It's our busy season at work. We just got a new puppy. I'm planning my wedding. My kids are on spring break. That's what's that's what I'm hearing right now. I'm starting a new job. Think about something you've said no to lately. And whether that's to yourself or to someone else, you've just shut down an idea that you came up with or you've told someone else no on something they've asked you if you wanted to do with them. Now, are there things that you've said no to that would actually feel really good to complete or to challenge yourself with? Like if you knew that you would be successful with those things and finish them to completion where possible, how would it feel? So if you're like at A, right? And the goal is C, I want you to mentally just remove B for a minute, okay? Remove the how, remove the steps. Are the end goals, the C or the end results, even if it's just to say you tried it, that could be the end goal, right? Just to say that you've tried something new, something you desire. Would completing the thing, would getting to C that would require you to make some changes to commit to, would it feel good? Would it lead to personal growth, build your confidence, be a source of inspiration for your kids, positively impact your life? In any way, maybe just make a great story. And in making the choice to not pursue those things, have you said, it's just, it's just not the right time. It's just not the right time. But I have a question for you. What if that means that it's exactly the right time? Hear me out. I'm not saying take on more than you can chew. I'm not saying set unrealistic goals and expectations, setting yourself up for failure, for failure. Doing that in the past for me has removed every ounce of joy from everything I was pursuing and from all the roles I was fulfilling. Example, I love to bake. It was my first little side hustle in life. I was baking and selling those baked goods. Around Thanksgiving and Christmas was the time I would make the most money with it. But I found that once I started to host Thanksgiving, right? Like I'm a big girl now, I'm hosting, I'm not going to mom's anymore, mom's coming here. 
And Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, by the way. Once I started to host Thanksgiving and I still had this side hustle of baking I was trying to maintain, all joy from baking and Thanksgiving were just gone. I was truly exhausted. Like the amount of sleep I was surviving on for that week leading up to Thanksgiving, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I did it. But I know that that's why, you know, my husband always, my husband and I always have these great intentions. We're going to go shopping on Black Friday, right? So we get a sitter for the kids and this is what we're going to do. And every time I would go to one store and just be so exhausted from the week prior that we would just end up at our local favorite Mexican restaurant picking out on chips and salsa and margaritas and coming home to lay on the couch. Like that was actually what I wanted to do after what I had just put myself through. And once we started traveling to my in-laws for Christmas, which is another thing that I love to do, I love to go to their house for Christmas, such amazing traditions to be a part of. And they're just such good people. The Christmas baking and the traveling plus creating Christmas memories with my boys, it totally was too much over the holidays. I had to eliminate what was not important to me because I couldn't ruin another holiday season for myself with the added stress of something that was bringing zero joy to my life. And it didn't mean I had to stop baking because that was the part that actually brought me joy, right? I just stopped selling the baked goods. So this last holiday season is the first time this I implemented this and it was amazing. I have zero regrets. I still get to bake, but now for my family and my friends, and I get to actually feel fully present when I'm baking and in that joy, and also feel fully present with family for the holidays. And I'm not focused how I'm going to fulfill all those orders in time and when I'm going to actually sleep. So no, I'm not saying take on more than you can chew, but rather what discomforts can you challenge yourself with for a season? that would bring joy, growth, something positive to your life. I have to tell you guys about a new meat delivery subscription service I'm using. ButcherBox delivers high quality meat you can trust right to your front door. I'm talking free range organic chicken, humanely raised pork, 100% grass fed and grass finished beef and wild caught seafood. So you can feel good about what you're eating, but also the taste and the quality are amazing. Click the link in my show notes to grab your first butcher box. I read something on social media the other day. What if you meet the right guy at the wrong time and someone responds, then he's the wrong guy. Because if he was the right guy, you'd have your moment in every rom-com, right? Where she runs after him because she realizes she's made a big mistake in not choosing him or vice versa, right? And hopefully he's still available when you figure that out. They usually are. On Lifetime movies, they are always still available, right? Is the opportunity you're saying it's not the right time for, like saying no to the right guy? What if the opportunity is not there in the future to say yes to? Would you be okay with living with that shut up? You know, sometimes I think the tough times make us feel like like they're going to be lasting for all of eternity. And anyone with an acid reflux baby who never sleeps and is trying to breastfeed can tell you tough times don't last. Tough people do. And that's why I want to emphasize season. The challenge isn't going to be as hard as it is in the beginning, right? Whatever the challenge is, you're going to conquer it or you're going to get better at it or stronger, or more resilient, it's going to start coming more naturally to you. When I was waking up from my workout seven years ago, I was setting five alarms and complaining the whole way through the workouts. I was making my morning more stressful. Today, I wake up and I walk out to my gym space within 10 minutes of my eyes opening, and it's like brushing my teeth. You will form new habits that will make the thing you're pursuing easier to manage. I'm not saying it will ever be easy. Maybe it will be. 
but I'm saying it'll feel more doable when you actually start doing. Action comes before motivation and we have to stop wasting our life away, waiting for it to be the other way around. When I look back at all the things I've done that have totally changed my life, my life circumstances surrounding the start of those things would indicate that it was the worst time to start something new and challenging. I started a full-time Monday through Friday, traditional nine to five job the first Monday following my last day of high school at just 17 years old. I didn't know responsibility until then. From high school to the corporate world to then enrolling in studies for my bachelor's degree all within three months and completing that, that degree in the traditional four-year time frame with lunch and nighttime courses. I started my master's degree studies when my firstborn was only two and a half months old, sleeping an hour at a time, had horrible reflux, and I was either pumping or feeding at all times while still holding down that same post high school full-time job. And I went on to earn my master's in less than two years time. I left my first marriage, $30,000 plus in debt with all the debt in my name. I couldn't even afford an attorney. And I moved back in with my parents and my two boys at the age of 29. I left my government job, the salary, the benefits, in the beginning of a pandemic with two kids on digital learning to build my own business from home with no proof that I was that I would succeed and no guarantee what money I would bring in from week to week. With that last one, you might be thinking, if you're anything like my stepdad, well, that just wasn't smart, Erica. My parents did not raise me to make decisions like that, right? But you know, oftentimes the right choice isn't the easy one. And not everyone will understand it. And oftentimes the smart choice isn't the right choice. I know that that may sound crazy to hear, but when I look back at those moments where I took action against the wind, they led to the greatest accomplishments of my life. All of those things I mentioned were challenging seasons of my life, but were worth the work on the other side of. I grew the most from those seasons. Victory is sweeter when it's not so easy to attain. There's a time for coasting seasons too. I like coasting around the holidays, preferably, but I don't want to coast my entire life. That doesn't sound exciting. That doesn't sound like how I want to spend my time here on earth, not seeing what I'm capable of, not uncovering my unique strengths. I don't want my kids to just coast. I want them to soar. We want that for our kids. Why don't we want that for ourselves bad enough to endure a challenging season? If you're facing the wind, as in called to an idea recently by yourself or someone else that would add a challenge to your life and you're thinking about backing down, sitting the season out, but you know that it would provide some positive impact to your life, I'm going to challenge you to do something right now. Adjust your sales. Take action. Use the wind to reach your goals. Use adversity as a, step in, a stepping stone to even greater things. It's in this season that you will grow stronger. It's when you say, I will take action regardless of timing, that you built the strength to take on the next thing and then the next and the next. I thought of this topic today because I recently just added two new challenges to my life, earning my group fitness instructor certification and purchasing a course to build my skill set for business growth. I had moments where I was like, oh my God, why did I do this to myself? I'm getting ready to travel a lot. My son is starting baseball. I was already doing a lot. Why did I put this on myself? I can't do this. Can I get my money back? The reality of how uncomfortable things were about to get really set in. But I reminded myself of some of the things that I mentioned earlier. 
the challenging seasons that I've already survived and thrived through and come out stronger because of. Those seasons built the person today that can say, oh, yes, Erica. Yes, you can. You've survived much harder things because when we allow ourselves to take action against the wind, we open up the door for growth. We build a person that is redefining what a challenge even is with each one that they conquer. Strong people are built through action. They're not different from you. They just took action. It's adversity as a stepping stone. It's seeing a challenge as an opportunity. Don't back down from the opportunity to make your life better. It's not the right time. It's just the right time. In fact, it's the only time. I found my purpose in my resilience. I get to sit here today and work on things I'm passionate about as my career, not because I waited for the right time to try something new. I'd still be waiting because I started doing. I got tired of regretting not trying, right? I talked about that last episode. I don't think jealousy is necessarily a bad thing. It calls our attention to something that needs to be examined within us. Next time you feel jealous, ask yourself why, because it doesn't have anything to do with that other person. What's it bringing up for you? A lot of times it's something we wish we had. We wish we had tried. We wish we had started 10 years ago. Do you want to really spend your life coasting and wishing you had? Being jealous of those actually doing? Only put off until tomorrow, which you are willing to die having left undone. What are you willing to leave undone? The thing you said it isn't the right time for? Are you willing to leave that undone? Because later may not come. You won't be less busy. If it's something worth having, it'll always challenge you. When will you accept the challenge? Um, When you do, my favorite thing happens. The people, your friends, your family, your kids that you'll get to inspire along the way. It's a beautiful part of the journey. When we share our challenging seasons, we get to provide proof for someone else that they too can do hard things. Don't just show the medal at the end. Show the work along the way. That's the real gift, the real impact. Go be that proof for someone else. Until next episode. E.